I'm Jarrell Marshall with the Georgia State Entrepreneurship and Innovation Institute. Today we're here with a very special entrepreneur. Um, his name is Devon. Thank For you. For that don't know, tell me who you are. My name is Devon. Um, I'm a, uh, I consider myself a disruptor, an urban entrepreneur. Um, I'm in the, I'm in the uh, fintech space trying to disrupt uh, the prepaid debit card space, trying to empower African Americans, both um, financially and economically. Okay. So, talk about some of the lessons that you learned early in your life that are super important for your career as an entrepreneur. Um, I think I, I think I learned uh, early in my life. It was it was more so just just believing in, in yourself. Um, I had a, had, a, had a hardship with my mother. Um, you know, my stories. My mother was addicted to crack and, um, during the uh, '80s crack epidemic. I had to take to the streets at an early age. So um, doing that really taught me how to become responsible. Had to become mature fast. Had to grow up fast, and just you know, give me the survival set, survival skill sets. And really, from that, I think that that carried over when I was incarcerated, carried over to prison, and then also served me well, you know, entrepreneurship. Because not only did I have a survival mindset and to win by any means and you know to to, to, uh, to overcome any obstacles, but also in prison taught me some great disciplines as far as uh, being studious, researching, studying, you know, building my mind, and that, that served me well during my entrepreneurship um, uh, foray. So there's always been this relationship between hip hop and entrepreneurship. Are there any icons in hip hop that? you admire from a business standpoint? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I think I say um, Sean Combs, you know, P. Diddy, Puffy, or Puff Daddy, whatever you want to call him. Um, early on, I, lo I, I looked at him and how he, how he did things. I thought he was a genius at, um, at marketing, a genius at, 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 at being innovative and, ch and changing, changing the game and, and doing things different. I really admired that a, a lot early on in his early career. So um, he's definitely someone I look to as far as what they're doing, what's new, and what's fresh. And that, that besides him, I'd say um, more current would be Jay-Z. I really admire what Jay-Z was able to do, having that street aura, coming from you know the hustler um, background, and then taking that to the level he took it to. So in your music, you often talk about technology and, and the part it plays in our everyday life. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I think, I think technology, I mean, technology to me, is, is it, it brings convenience to human life, right? And I think we all want efficiency, we all want convenience, and, and we're all willing to give value or exchange value for that, or, or pay for that. So um, me putting my music is more so just me showing the convergence of, you know, how, how, how technology is permeating, you know, current life of pop, pop culture, how it's at the forefront, and how it's gonna keep, keep uh, pushing things at the forefront of, of everything that, that we do in life. So that's how I kind of look at it. So I kind of merge it and use it. So you seem to be very passionate about uh, serving underprivileged communities, increasing financial literacy. Um, at what point did that become such an important part in your life? Well, all my life, since I've been in the streets hustling since I was 13 years old, it was always about to get, it was about getting money. And I needed money to survive. You know, take care of me and my brother, food, clothing, shelter. So it's always been at the forefront of my, my mind, my drive to get money. Um, but not until I met Ben Horowitz did I, did I see it in a different light. Um, not about just getting the money, but how do we empower um, and solve these problems on, on, at, the, at the root? And how do we empower individuals that are in these um, underserved communities, underrepresented, disenfranchised? Um, and how do we empower them financially and economically? So with the black card, that was really my goal, to really empower them at a real level um, and, and let them build a, a, a financial base. So financial literacy was at the forefront of that, but I wanted to take it a step further and, and teach some you know, entrepreneurship education. So all of the phases of your life are really different. Can you talk about how your mindset has had to adjust to each phase of your life? Yeah, so, so as, as a child, it was all about you know, survival. How do I survive? How do I get that next meal? How do I um, help my mother pay the rent? How do I put food, food in, the, um, in the refrigerator? And from a survival state, I think I took that same skill set in the prison with me. But I, I kind of adjusted it in a way where it wasn't about survival, survival in a 
in a negative fashion or violent fashion, but more about survival, keeping my sanity, keeping my spirituality, keeping my emotions, you know, keeping all that intact and fortifying my spirit in that way, you know, building my mind. And then again, I carry that out into the world again in, in the entrepreneurship where I'm at now. I think it, it all serves like a great purpose. And adjusting with um, with entrepreneurship, adjusting with that, it was more like a, a crazy learning curve. Just trying to understand how how business is conducted in a formal way, in an organized way. I never really had that that training before. I got really real ent entrepreneurial, um, I guess, energy or you know, or real entrepreneurial knowledge, and it's been more so intuitive than anything for me. So, what has been the biggest difference from functioning in the business world that you're functioning now to um, the other types of people you had to conduct business with in the past? Um, the risk, I think, the risk versus the reward. Um, you know, when I was in the streets, it, it was high risk, but it was high reward as well. You know, money came fast, money came in abundance. Now it's, it's, it's like no risk, and it's still a high reward. Uh, but you know, it takes it's much longer. It's a much longer process. So I had to adjust to that that, that much longer process. You know, I'm used to making the money fast, getting the money fast, being able to take care of what I take care of. Now it's more so. You know, I have to be more humble. I have to be more patient. Have to be more diligent. Uh, so that's what I, that's the, the difference in, in the people, on um, people that you know that, that I worry about killing me, you know, for money, or killing me for my drugs or whatever it is. You might kill me for my death, but you know, that's something different, you know. So when people hear the story of your life and reflect on it, what's the biggest thing that they should take away? Wow. Um, um, belief. Hope. He's somebody that believed in himself. He's somebody that believed in his vision. And he's somebody that wouldn't, wouldn't stop until he's seen it come into fruition. And that's really like the mission I'm on. Like black is, is a lifetime mission. This isn't something I'm just picking up and trying to make money and keep it moving. This is a lifetime mission. I'm trying to place my people in, in, in a power position. I'm trying to leave a legacy. And I think that's what life's about. We have 100 years on this planet if, we, if we're blessed. And it's all about how do we leverage ourselves in a way where we not only empower ourselves, but how do we empower the world? And how do we leave something for others to pick up after we're gone? How does that legacy, how does that legacy live on? And you know, and, and my focus was with the black card and, and building that you know, building generational wealth. Not leaving back, not leaving generational poverty or generational debt, but generational wealth. And how do we put ourselves in a position of power versus being powerless? Right? We, we have over one trillion dollars in annual spending power. How do we how do we, how do we tap in harness and leverage that? That's kind of where I'm at with the black group and where I'm at with the black card. So let the people know where they can follow you on social media, how they keep up with your music and your new business ventures. It's Divine the Fourth Letter. Check me out I'm on Twitter, Fourth Letter Music. Um, catch me on Facebook, uh, Fourth Letter Forever, 4th Letter Forever, 4th Letter Music. Um, Stay in tune. I'm on SoundCloud, Fourth Letter Music too. Stay in tune. We got a lot of big things coming. You can follow us at ENITSU on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can visit us on the web at eni.gsu.edu. If you're in the downtown Atlanta area and you need a haircut, make sure you come to Vintage Hair Gallery. Peace, it's your man Devon. If you're in downtown Atlanta and need your head done, come check my man Herb at Vintage Barbershop.